So the video you are about to see uh, is a very heavily edited down stream that I did last week uh, on Wednesday. If you like this format and want to see more of it, please let me know. Um, I do plan on doing more streams, not necessarily ones that I can turn on the videos on their own, but if I happen to do them and you would like to see them, please, please tell me. Um, let me know what you think of this format. If you never want to see it again, that's totally cool too. Please let me know whether or not uh, I will do more videos like this will be will remain to be seen, but uh, hopefully you enjoy the video. I, I am not doing straight sword hill. I'm actually going to do uh, my favorite weapon. Best weapon is a little bit of a lie, but it's okay. The best weapon, like the actual best weapon, I think it really depends on your playstyle. Like there isn't a single weapon that I would recommend to everyone. Um, Claymore is up there. Black Knight Halberd, I mean Black Knight Halberd is honestly probably the best weapon, but if it doesn't fit your playstyle, it doesn't really work. Personally, I really like the Scythe. It has a very, very similar moveset to the Black Knight Halberd. Um, it's lower damage, but it's easier to get. I like it more. Yeah, I really like the Black Knight. Uh, all the Black Knight weapons are really fun. My favorite is probably just the sword, because nostalgia <laughs> more than anything. I used that in my first playthrough to beat Gwyn. Claymore is a very, very fun weapon. I'm not sure why I like it so much. It's not like it's especially powerful. It's not like it has a really cool moveset. It's just fun to use. I think the same thing goes for the Zwei and the Greatsword. Well, no, the Greatsword is fun because it's a massive slab of metal. <laughs> I look over to the chat and I just see Bitch Beans. <laughs> That's a really good username. <laughs> Uh, welcome to the stream for however long you stay. I haven't, I've seen quite a few funny usernames in my time. Uh, one of my favorites was I have no brain, but I must think. That one was really funny. That's <laughs> probably my favorite. But Bitch Beans is also up there. Stop it! I swear to God. <laughs> Very normal Dark Souls gameplay happening. I, I love seeing funny usernames. Like, mine isn't, and that's just out of utility more than anything. Um, but if I didn't aspire to be a YouTuber as a living, I would absolutely have a really dumb nickname. I don't know what it would be, but I would. I'm surprised, Great Axe, what? Okay. <laughs> I forgot you could grab the Great Axe like that. Um... I lost my train of thought. I don't even remember what I was going to say. Sack. From the first one? That's awesome. Gaming, indeed. Emphasis on the gay. Nope. <laughs> Here we go. Perfect. This was supposed to be easy. No. God. Oh, I did it bad. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> Stop it. It's okay. Everything's fine. We got this. Oh, hi. Drink. Alright, first try. What is this guy doing? Aya! I am. You know, I'm not good at Capper Demon only because it's usually a very easy fight once you get past the dogs. So I don't know his moveset very well. Uh, if you don't go next to the fog wall, he doesn't aggro. And you can just kind of wail on him. It's really funny. And that's what I was trying to do, but I messed it up. And then I just kind of did a normal Capra Demon fight. Well, normal with a plus zero. I don't know if that is what I would consider normal, but it's fine. I don't know. At this point, I guess it's kind of my normal. <laughs> Capra doesn't even have bad hitboxes. I mean, Dark Souls 2 has overblown hitboxes. Um... I don't think they're that bad 99% of the time. It's that 1% that people remember. I don't understand why everyone thinks, like, Smelter has bad hitboxes. Smelter is one of my favorite bosses in the series just because of how tight his hitboxes are. Like, his slam is a little wonky, but he's definitely not a terrible example. What? Can you stop doing this one attack? Sirlon's grab isn't even that bad. Um, it just looks kind of weird sometimes because you'll get caught by it, uh, but he will keep moving, so it like snaps you into a weird spot. Like the sword will hit you, but he'll be like at the base of the sword, um, but the animation moves you to the front of the sword. Oh. 
<laughs> that was very poorly timed roll. I'm gonna go ahead and get to a safe spot too. There we go. Something, something. I thought this game was supposed to be hard. Uh, these two dogs are going to obliterate me though. <laughs> They're not aggroed. That's interesting. Whoa, he dropped his machete. That's stupidly rare. Do these ones have less health than the ones in the depths? What? I never knew that. There's just so many cool weapons in Dark Souls 2 with power stancing and uh, how cool the greatsword is, obviously. <laughs> um, all the different spell types, you know, with hexes, pyromancies, um, and the way that you can combine spell types. Like, uh, if you're doing a pure sorcerer build, but there's a pyromancy that you want to use, you can totally do that. But largely, I think Dark Souls 2 did spell a variety the best. If you don't want to level adaptability, obviously you're not going to be able to heal as quickly, but you're probably going to be using a slower build anyway uh, and have more time to heal because you're going to be using a shield. Um, and I think it really encourages that kind of variety a lot better. Like like in Dark Souls 1, uh, there are certain bosses that you just like can't really use a shield with and it's just a massive shield. But in Dark Souls 2, you like have to learn how to use your shield. You can't just use it to catch yourself if you roll poorly. Why am I going this way? I don't need to go this way. Great shields are very fun. Doing a dual great shield build just to mess around is really funny. I play pretty passively, but specifically with uh, dodging. Like if you watch me do the boss fights in the true highest DPS video, which wasn't the true highest DPS. I forgot crystal infusion, but like if you watch me play, like I'm playing really passively most of the time, just waiting for an opportunity to attack because I started with this game. And that's just kind of how it teaches you to play. So I have a video on my channel from years ago. Uh, do not watch it. It's called Bloodborne is the Worst One. And I still, I don't think Bloodborne is the worst one anymore. Uh, I think that goes to either Dark Souls 3 or Elden Ring, just for my personal preferences. However, I do still stand by a lot of what I said in that video. There's a lot that I absolutely agree with. I just didn't really focus on the positives at all. Like, I still think the shadows are a really annoying boss fight. My favorite boss is still Martyr Lucarius, can't remember his name. <laughs> um, but, like, I don't like his inconsistencies. Um, I don't like the inconsistencies at all in any of for any of the bosses. I, okay, so the thing I don't like about Elden Ring is how, is how you can be aggressive. Like, the whole thing is, like, you can be aggressive if you find the openings, right? But... I don't like how you have to find the openings. Malaketh, right, is probably my least favorite boss in the entirety of the Soulsborne, um, Seki Soulsborne series. Aside from, like, maybe Ludden Zalin, but that's more because of the run-up, so whatever. How he just takes off, and you can't do anything while he's in there, but then when he lands, if you know what you're doing, right, you can get an attack there. But he also immediately jumps away again, so you, you have to be lucky to find it in the first place, I guess is my problem. That applies to a lot of bosses. I don't like how Radigan just kind of like flies away for a little bit with the um, the attack where he slams back down into the ground. It should be about right here. Oops. Come on. There we go. Don't die. Cool. Got it. First try. I don't like how uh, you... In order to be completely safe for Rykard, you just kind of need to run in circles for a while when he does this. That one, I don't remember what the name of the attack is, his rampage attack or whatever. All the bosses have something I don't like. <clears throat> for like Godric, you know, it's the the wind, the tornado. My butterfly is the only boss in this game that does that. So it feels more like a, oh hey, here's this little outlier that could be fun. I mean, it isn't most of the time. <laughs> if you don't like it, you can also just get a ranged weapon, because most builds have some ranged option that they can use, right? Um, if you're already using spells or whatever, then obviously you have a ranged weapon. Uh, if you're doing a dex build, you can use a bow. If you're using a strength build, you can use a crossbow. Uh, can you hit the Moonlight Butterfly with a crossbow? I'm not actually sure about that. I very much dislike Melania, and it's not even just because of Waterfowl. Um, like her move where she, in her second phase, where she like jumps up and then sends a bunch of clones stabbing at you, I hate that attack. Ooh, I completely forgot. Brain shut off. The way she heals when she hits your shield is her biggest design flaw by far. Like it's not even close. But yeah, if you want to sh use a shield against Melania, too bad, I guess. I know Get Good is a meme in the Souls community, but it seems like FromSoft took it 
and was like, oh, that's what they want, and then made Elden Ring. Dark Souls, the difficulty is part of the charm because of, like, the point is overcoming it, right? Um, with Sekiro, it's kind of the same thing. But, like, the gameplay itself is meant to be satisfying, like, with with or without the accomplishment. Why am I not getting it? I think I'm too high up. I don't think linearity is better. Like, I hate how linear Dark Souls 3 is, because if you want to get a later game weapon, you just, like, can't use it for most of the game. And, of course, you can, like, skip to Lothric Castle with through the Dancer. But aside from that, like, if you want to use a weapon from Anne Orlando, you just have to wait for over half the game and it's really annoying and you just can't use that weapon for dark souls one for instance if you want to use a weapon from an orlando <laughs> which is kind of at the same point i don't know it's a little earlier in dark souls one if you want to use a weapon from the dlc uh you kill four bosses five bosses uh and then you know however many to get through the dlc that you want uh so i i think openness is good for build variety i think dark souls 2 did that really well as well just because the four branching paths and then the million souls thing where you can just kill the rotten a few times instead of you know where am i go i swear to god i hate <laughs> this controls there we go but yeah like dark souls 3 i don't like the linearity i would say a ring is still kind of linear like you can choose the first several bosses however you want right you can do whatever order um but like uh if you want to use a weapon from Faramazula tough. Elden Ring is my least favorite for a lot of reasons. Bosses are the biggest reason by far, because um, the bosses are like usually my favorite part of the series, or of the games rather. Um, but the world layout, just having to run around for two hours to start any playthrough sucks. <laughs> like, <clears throat> if you don't want to be super underleveled, you just kind of have to run through everything again. Um, and if you've already done that, it's a lot less fun, it's a lot less interesting. Like, exploring the first time is incredible one of the best experiences i've ever had in the game but going back to replay it at all that was very smart of me going back to replay it at all is not great <clears throat> i see what you mean Hazel. like they are linear like for dark souls one you have to do the two bell fights and then you have to uh, go through inner um and then you have to go through the four lords before you get to gwyn but like you can do things to change that progression in a lot of different ways like even without sin skip uh, you can do, it only takes three bosses to get to Anne Orlando. Um, and then there's still all the other bosses in the game for you to use whatever build you want on, right? And even if you want to get to the Tomb of the Giants, like you can go through almost all of the Tomb of the Giants before getting the Lord Vessel. Um, Seath's Archives is blocked off, but that's because all the stuff in Seath's Archives is like upgrades to stuff. It's like obviously you have stuff like Crystal Magic Weapon or whatever, but even like Crystal Upgrades are just an upgrade to stuff, right? It's not like you're going to have a crystal weapon as your main weapon. It's not supposed to be like that. So I think locking seats off makes a lot of sense. New Londo is obviously entirely accessible. Lost Isolith doesn't really have anything. So, like, it's not... I wouldn't say it's linear in a way that... It's, a, it's linear in a way that offers progression without destroying your options, I suppose. I, I would argue that Dark Souls 1... Okay, how do I put this? <laughs> I don't think Dark Souls 1 is flawless. I think its flaws make it better. Um, like, obviously, Lost Isolith is considered one of the worst levels by the developers, right? But I really like Lost Isolith for the atmosphere that it has and brings to the rest of the game. Um, I like that it's empty. Uh, and it's like, you walk into this giant pool of lava with all these dragon butts, and it's like, what is going on? What is this? And it, I mean... It's a lot more chaotic than it would be otherwise, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I, I don't think Lost Isolith is perfect. Um, if it could be better, it would, you know, that would make the game better. But I don't think it makes Dark Souls 1 worse, if that makes sense. It could be better. It doesn't make the game worse. Yeah. And I like Bed of Chaos, but I'm also weird, so... I, I like how empty and crazy and weird Lost Isolith is. I do wish they would have had more demon variety. Like, not having a Capra or Taurus demon in Lost Isolith itself is kind of weird. And then, like... Though, it's like they're escaping in a coordinated effort, and that's a really funny headcanon, so I changed my mind. I really like that none of the Capra demons or Taurus demons are in Lost Isolith, and they're just kind of, like, 
up in the demon ruins because they're actively attempting to escape. I swear this entire stream won't just be me dying in Sins Fortress over and over. Oh yeah, I was talking about the DLC. Um, I don't like the DLC just because there are so many enemies. It's like, it's not like Dark Souls 3 in that way. Um, Dark Souls 3, and to a point, ooh, a turn, to a point, Bloodborne, uh, its difficulty comes from having a lot of enemies. And like, I know people say that about Dark Souls 2. However, um, I disagree with that uh, being why Dark Souls 2 is hard, just because of how the levels are laid out and how the enemies are placed. Um, I'm talking about Scholar of the First Sin, actually. I, I don't know Vanilla Dark Souls 2 well enough to have an opinion on that. But for the Scholar of the First Sin, like, there are a lot more... There are a lot more enemies in Dark Souls 2 than there are in Dark Souls 3. However, it's, it's the way they're laid out, you're meant to be ambushed a lot, right? And that's true of Dark Souls 1 as well. Uh, anyway, yeah, Dark Souls 2 is, is very much about patience and memory. That's a very good way to put it. Um, it it's, it's laid out in a way where the frustrating bits are fun because of how they're frustrating, right? Um, I would say the one place where that doesn't hold super true is Shrine of Amana. Um, but even then, I don't dislike Shrine of Amana just because there are so many ways that you can overcome it. Um, and that leads back into Dark Souls 1 design philosophy. Anyway, uh, Dark Souls 1 DLC has too many enemies, and then the chasm of the abyss is awful and stupid. <laughs> Whoa, $5. Thank you so much. I don't deserve money. <laughs> um, least favorite part about Dark Souls 3 apart from its linearity? That's a good question. Pontiff. <laughs> there are a lot of bosses in Dark Souls 3 that I don't particularly enjoy. Um, Pontiff is among the highest of them. I don't like Gale. I don't like Nameless. I don't like um, Deacons or Abyss Watchers. That's not entirely true. I like Abyss Watchers as a concept, um, but I don't like Abyss Watchers uh, as the actual fight, especially Phase 2. Phase 2 is awful. I hate Abyss Watchers Phase 2. Whoa, I forgot about this platform. Um... It's strong points apart from the bosses. <laughs> I didn't. I wouldn't call the bosses a strong point, but um, I think it's best. Like the best thing about Dark Souls Three is how it feels to play. I'm gonna let it kill me. Like, um, it probably feels the best to play apart from like Sekiro, just because of how fluid the controls are um, and how everything flows into itself. Um, that said, that isn't really that difficult because 90% of the game is R1 spamming. <laughs> uh, soul level 1 with stock class items. I mean, I'm planning soul level 1 with straight sword hilt only. Does that count? Uh, I do also want to do a playthrough with all of the starting class, or yeah, all the class like starting items, but not soul level 1, just to see like which one has the best. That's more of an analysis style video than a challenge run. Uh, yeah, my least favorite point of Dark Souls 3 is probably the bosses. I don't know, because some of the bosses are really cool and fun. <laughs> um, like, the Dancer is probably my favorite boss. Second favorite boss in the series behind, like, Kalami. Um, and the Demon Princes are really, really fun. There are a lot of really fun bosses in Dark Souls 3. There are a lot of really not fun bosses in Dark Souls 3. I changed my mind. The level design is absolutely the worst thing about Dark Souls 3. Um, one of my favorite examples of how terrible the level design in Dark Souls 3 can be is in um, High Wall of Lothric. When you're going to the shortcut elevator, there's that one hollow in that room, right? Uh, you enter the room, and then four other hollows climb up off of a ledge that you couldn't have possibly seen coming. There's literally no way to know that those, those four hollows are going to be there unless you like see the tips of their fingers. Meanwhile, you're already fighting another hollow. Um, so, like... The way it ambushes you is a lot less fair. Why didn't I repost? The way it ambushes you a lot is a lot less fair than Dark Souls 2, because again, Dark Souls 2 is built around noticing and understanding uh, how ambushes and how to avoid them. Um, Dark Souls 1 is about like paying attention to your surroundings. Like even in this area, that one hollow runs away from you, but you're not supposed to go running as quickly as you can after it. Um, the one the naked one down that staircase right there, right? Uh, you chase it, and then another hollow jumps out at you if you're not paying attention. But that's teaching you in a 
relatively safe environment, right? Because you probably just took out the boar, which is the hardest part of that. So you're in a relatively safe environment. You can get back there really quickly and easily that, hey, you're, you should probably be careful and not, and like look around corners, not chase enemies, that sort of thing. Uh, so I really, really like the level design in Dark Souls 1 and 2, and then I hate it in Dark Souls 3. I like the speed of Dark Souls 3. I don't think they took advantage of it in the way that they should have. So like, like I said, the Dancer is one of my favorite bosses in the series, but but that's because it feels like a Dark Souls 1 boss in Dark Souls 3 speeds. I love that so much. Um, that's part of why I like the Demon Princess too, right? They act more like the Gargoyles than <laughs> the Elden Ring Gargoyles. <laughs> they act more like the Bell Gargoyles than the, the Gargoyles in Elden Ring. Um, and I think it works really well. <laughs> the Demon Prince hanging out. The one that would... Why the Demon Prince? If I could hang out with any Dark Souls boss without it being like dangerous it would probably be Seath just because I would really like to learn all the things that he learned through having immortality and I know he went mad and insane but like that's so interesting to me if he would just like sit down and talk to me the rats from Dark Souls 2 that's such a good answer oh my god like the like the rat king uh would he be included in that or just the vanguard vanguard authority no vanguard vanguard is the one with all the rats I don't know I feel like if, if Seath could properly talk about his immortality, I would love talking to him. However, if he wouldn't be able to do it coherently, um, my second choice would probably be Gwendolyn. And it's definitely not because I have a crush on Gwendolyn. It would be so interesting to see how the rats actually see the world now that I think about it. Because, like, they see humans as filth. Um, but they're also diseased. And, it, like, do they see their disease as just, like, a part of them? Do they see it as I would see, um, I don't know, like, my autism? Like, I don't like my autism as a bad thing, right? Um, it just changes how I interact with the world. And and I wonder if the rats would see their, their raw and their diseased bodies in the same way that I would see my autism. Or if it's, like, if they see it as a negative that they also want to get rid of, but they blame humans for it. I don't know. The rats is a really good, interesting answer. <laughs> Talk to Logan. Logan's not a boss, though. I mean, I guess he kind of takes Seath's place. Seath 2.0. See, the rats are either extremely ableist or, like, the coolest people you've ever talked to. I'm surprised no one said Sif so that they could pet better. I think seeing Estelle would be a life-changing experience. Just, like, <clears throat> understanding that there is a creature of that size is just like harrowing. <laughs> hmm. See, the problem with that is they're called the penetrator because they use their sword to penetrate things. <clears throat> if there was another reason they were called the penetrator, I might change my answer. But fire, yeah, fire giant too, because he's like insanely old too, huh? Um, he lived at the time of the giants, and it would be so interesting to see how how he sees the world with how big he is, you know? If he even understands the way we see the world as well as we are. <laughs> well, <laughs> Volstadt would absolutely call you a slur. <laughs> Volstadt being racist or bigoted generally just because of his position is really funny to me. I feel like all of the monarchy in all of the games would be very, very bigoted. Actually, isn't the their giant spectral deer the 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 ancestor spirit? Venison is pretty tasty. <laughs> Margot pulling out a book to just like opening slurs for whatever you are on Google. <laughs> what are some slurs for this demographic? <laughs> Okay, I f if you were also a spirit, then it would taste good. Thank you, Emily, for the $5. Uh, are you the Emily that is also a member? Because I feel like you're giving more me more money than I deserve. Thank you so much. <laughs> Edex Gundir, second phase for best tasting. The Puss of Man, huh? I don't know. 
I'm not into men. Isn't tarnished already kind of a slur? Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say. <laughs> Tier list for how bigoted each boss is. I feel like um, the demons in this game, the Asylum Stray and Demon Fire Sage. Mm, I feel like the Stray and Asylum Demon would be bigoted, but the Demon Fire Sage wouldn't be, just because they hang out with the, the other demons. I don't know why. Patches? I don't know. Patches is kind of a stand-up guy. Like, I know he kicks you down to a pit several times through the series, but he also only does it because he thinks you're, like, a bad person, right? Because, let's be honest, 90% of the people in Dark Souls are bad people. Uh, and I feel like that's a pretty safe assumption, all things considered. Um, Radigan and Marika are not bigoted at all. Just because they're like basically trans. I feel like the person with the biggest list of slurs, however, uh, would be like Gideon. He's he knows all the slurs. I think Vendrick would be very chill and understanding, and not understand why being a king is evil. Godric is only bigoted because he wants to be superior. Gideon is bigoted because he's like one of those alt writers that thinks they're one of the smartest people in the world and just like. Gideon wants to be superior in terms of knowledge, um, but they don't understand that knowledge is, like, a very subjective thing at times. Uh, where was I? Oh, Manus would absolutely be extremely bigoted. <laughs> 100%. I'm gonna kill this guy. I think it would be really funny <laughs> if Godafroy was just the exact opposite of Gideon. I don't know why I'm getting that. I'm not gonna kill any ghosts. Um, like, he was locked up for being a bigot, but, like too much of a bigot, like even more than Godric. Um, and Godric was just not having it. So he locked him up. Uh, and he learned his lesson. Whoa. Hey there, guy. What's the deal with the one Dark Wraith in the High Wall of Lothric? Is there anything to that guy? Or is he just kind of chilling there? I feel like Placidisax would be like, he's not intentionally bigoted. He just grew up as a bigot. Um, and now that he's like an old, he's old, he's like a grandpa, right? Uh, if he had grandchildren, he'd be super accepting of whatever they did. He just doesn't quite understand it. I think Melania would be also very accepting. I mean, she would have to be to care about Mikla in a way other than what Moog does. Yeah, Moog would be like, Moog would be a chaser. <laughs> Moog would absolutely be a chaser. Uh, an ex- Liking something and then disliking something is one of the worst reasons to dislike something, but I absolutely have that experience. Uh, I like Bloodborne. I like Bloodborne a lot. Um, just not nearly as much as, you know, Dark Souls 1 or 2. I would put it behind Dark Souls 1, 2, and Sekiro, and then Bloodborne. And then, I don't know, I'm kind of stuck between... <laughs> I don't know why I thought that was going to be a stab. My brain just shut off and forgot the moveset. Anyway, um, Dark Souls 3 and Elden Ring, I have a really hard time placing. I put Demon Souls below Bloodborne. I really, really like Bloodborne. And then Dark Souls 3 and Elden Ring are the two that I shit talk to the most. So going from a game that I really, really like to a game that, to two games that I don't quite as much, I think that's the biggest drop in preference for me. Minoan? Yeah, I, uh, on my channel there's a shelf called Based Souls Creators. Minoan's on there, along with Tori and the Backlog, and I should put Trev on there. My voice is like crack, because it's good. I appreciate that, <laughs> if that's what it means. Crack equals good. Okay, good to know. <laughs> Uneven numbers. I'm glad my voice is nice to listen to. I got that one, or before I transitioned, but I didn't like my voice back then. I like my voice. A lot more now. I think at this point, I like my voice just because it fits my self-image a lot more. Um, before I transitioned, obviously, my voice was a lot lower. And I thought I liked having a low voice, but I didn't realize it was giving me gender dysphoria. It's not like I have a super high voice now. I like having a low voice uh, relative to other women, especially cis women, uh, on average, obviously. But I... 
I like that it's higher than it used to be, and a lot, also a lot more like resonant, I think is the word for how that works. I don't know, for me I didn't really figure out um, my voice, it just kind of happened this way and I ended up liking it. That's how a lot of things happen for me. Things just kind of work out, <laughs> which is extremely fortunate and I recognize that I am very privileged uh, relative to a lot of people in that way. Um, I, like, uh, when I was trying to move out of my grandparents, because I, I moved to, to, to my grandparents because, or my grandma's specifically, because she lived in a place uh, that I wanted to be. So I was staying with her until I was able to, like, get a job and get money and stuff um, to find a place. But then someone, I, I, got, I did get a job really easily because my grandpa at the time who was living with, or not my grandpa, technically, um, but the guy who I treat as my grandpa, basically, who was living with my grandma at the time, was a contact, or had a job that I was also able to get really easily because of the recommendation. Um, and then I got roommates because they were looking for roommates and happened to be doing the exact same thing that I was staying with. I think it was their mom, actually. Um, so I got very, very lucky in terms of that. Mm. And now where I'm living now, um, I'm living with, or, uh, I, same thing happened basically. <laughs> they wanted to move here, um, near where I was and I knew them. So I moved in with them. I were, I want to sing as well. I'm not good <laughs> at singing. Um, I used to be, I was in choir. I did like a, uh, quartet thing in high school, uh, four of us. Did like a barbershop quartet. It's not, it's not like it was a huge school with a ton of people and I just happened to be one of the best. Um, I was just one of the best in that group. That's how it usually is for me. I'm the best at a lot of things among my friends. Obviously not everything, but like anything that I'm good at, I'm the best among my friends. And then <laughs> among most people, I end up being average at best. <laughs> yeah, Yumfa... <sighs> I really wish I watched Yumfa, but I can't because he doesn't talk or because they don't talk in their videos. Um, otherwise, I would watch Yumfa all the time. I just, I put videos on in the background. I don't like specifically paying attention to videos. Yeah, Yumfa videos seem so interesting to watch. And then I just don't because I don't want to read. <laughs> um, I like the idea of uploading weekly. And for now, I can keep that up pretty well. I have a ton of ideas, um, and they're all relatively easy to execute. Um, and, like, even if they weren't, I can do an easy idea in between. Uh, but I don't think I'm going to be able to keep up that pace for very long. I watch my videos all the time because I just don't remember the process of making them. So I was like, oh, this is interesting content that I've never seen before. I've beaten Orange Student Smo without getting hit on soul level 1 with, like, such low damage. And, yeah, I can't do it with, like my favorite weapon in the game. It's really a Dark Souls moment. What? Wombo combo. I completely understand that. <laughs> not wanting to be called a masochist. But it's also not entirely untrue of most of the people that I know. Like, they're actual masochists. Not necessarily extreme masochists or whatever. They just have those tendencies and also play Dark Souls. I doubt they're... I don't doubt they're linked. However, I don't think... Or I don't call anyone a masochist just because they play Dark Souls. <laughs> uh, first time watching Dream. Uh, I mean, this is the first time I've streamed in a long time. Yeah, because... The only other... Yeah, actually. I don't think I've ever had any big streams. This is very interesting. This is a lot more fun than not having very many viewers. But I'm also not at the point where I have... Thousands of viewers, so I can like actually engage with everyone. Hello, Anthony. Welcome to the stream. Doesn't YouTube chat have emojis that you can add? <laughs> but yeah, like, again, a lot of people I know who play Dark Souls um, are also masochists. Like, actual masochists that I call masochists for a good reason. I mean... I don't know. I wouldn't say Dark Souls is inherently full of suffering. I know people who don't like suffering who like Dark Souls for various reasons. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the more pain you experience, the 
more relieving the pleasure is. If you experience too much pleasure, your happy medium will rise. And while I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing, having a higher happy medium means you're happier generally. Um, it's easier to enjoy the small things. So if you are experiencing pain, I think it's okay to revel in that, uh, in that elation that you get once you escape it. I think making the most of your scenario is the best way to do things. So if you're in pain, look forward to when you will not be in pain and think of that as what will be the best moment of your life. And if you're not in pain, try to be even happier. Uh, unfortunately, no, you cannot pet the dragon. If only. If there was a Discord boss... Discord? What? A Dark Souls boss that I would want to pet, it would be Priscilla. Sif is a boring answer. You can punch the dragon. Well, oh, well close enough. Oh, Priscilla is part dragon. I forgot about that. Crossbeat Priscilla. So, yeah, if there was a dragon I could pet, it would also be Priscilla. Dark Souls boss, dragon, same thing. What? Where is she? Oh, right there. I always get so confused when trying to follow her footsteps. I don't know why. Dragon mommy. Indeed. <laughs> if there ever was, it would be Priscilla. I want her tail. I don't know why. I will not be using it. Yeah, there are very few people that I, like, actively subscribe to. Um, there are some people, like, um, that I like watching because uh, it's fun to watch someone who does some something similar to what you do. So, like, um, Tori I'm subscribed to because she does challenge runs basically very, very similar to what I do. Um, same with, like, Mino. Uh, and they're both trans women, right? Um, or, like, Trev the Dev does really interesting stuff uh, in terms of, like, statistics for the game but also challenge runs, um, and I think that's really fun to watch. I also have guilty pleasure YouTubers that I'm not subscribed to, but I really like watching, like, Lockpicking Lawyer. I have sat there and watched hours of Lockpicking Lawyer. But he's just like, here's a lock, click out of one. All right, we got that open. Thanks for watching. <laughs> and that's every single one of his videos, but I love it so much. <laughs> Sonic music is, like, unironically good most of the time. <clears throat> There's some... Not so great ones. Seven Rings and Hand comes to mind. But I know a lot of people also really like Seven Rings and Hand, which I do not understand at all. Uh, I, The f funny thing about that is I loved Sonic even when I didn't like his games. Like a long time ago. Um, I would, I liked the Mario games more than the Sonic games, but I always liked Sonic more. And it took me, or I still don't really understand why that was. Um, but it's just like, I don't know. I, I always liked it the ethos of Sonic more than Mario, um, <clears throat> as well as just, like, everything else surrounding it. Uh, and now I love a lot more Sonic games. Like, the classic games I've grown an appreciation for, I wouldn't say I love them. Um, but Sonic 1 and 2 are fun, in a way. <laughs> and then, like, Sonic 4, Episode 1, is so good. Um, Sonic Adventure is one of my favorite games. Um, Sonic Colors was really fun. I don't know. There's just a lot of Sonic games I really like. And there are also a lot of Sonic games that I really don't like. Sonic 3 and Knuckles is one of those. Um, I do not like Sonic 3 and Knuckles. I do not like uh, Sonic Generations. I don't like... Oh my god, that one shot him. Okay. Uh, I don't like Sonic Unleashed. Um, but still. Oh yeah, the... the yeah, it's the passion. I think the reason Sonic fans are so passionate is because they're autistic. And I don't know why. I don't understand why that's the demographic that gets attracted to Sonic. Uh, but in my experience, all the Sonic fans that I personally know are autistic, including myself. Uh, I started making videos about Car Quest because it was a game that I adored and that I just hadn't seen any content on. Um, granted, I started playing it like... No, I started playing it like two years after it came out, huh? Yeah, no mind. I was going to say I, I started playing it pretty soon after it came out, but I guess it wasn't that soon. Um, but there was just no content on it, so I just started making speedruns and walkthroughs and reviews and video essays about it. I just did... Uh, but, I mean, none of them ever caught on because it was Card Quest, and that's fine. Uh, I just put them out there for people who also happen to adore Card Quest for no reason. 
I have so many games in my Steam library that I want to play so bad, but just never do, because I just, like, don't have... It's like having a lot of really good food to eat, but not wanting to eat any of it. <laughs> Alright, plus 15, and then we can go kill a bunch of bosses. <laughs> Am I wearing any rings? I'm not. <laughs> this is just a very pure scythe playthrough. I want to finish it tonight, um, but I also didn't expect to have to do Sin Skip three times, so we'll see how far I actually get. Uh, I'll play for like another hour, hour and a half at most. <clears throat> My voice is getting pretty tired though because I haven't streamed in so long and I'm just not used to this. But again, I, I would absolutely love to beat this tonight. Never noticed these piles of corp corpses. I genuinely just thought they were like these things, but smaller. I had no idea these were pile of piles of corpses. That is such a weird thing to not notice for so long. Yeah, I, I would highly recommend playing Neon White if you already like it and haven't played it. <laughs> I had a game like that for a long time. Uh, the Ace Attorney series. I really liked it. And then I did end up playing it. I ended up buying it uh, as like a depressive impulse purchase because I was, I was like... Or back in high school, I was, like, genuinely really depressed. I mean, like, obviously, I still have depression, but I don't suffer from it as much. Um, but I was just really feeling down and just bought it on a whim. Um, played through the entire trilogy in a matter of weeks, and I loved it so much. But they're super fun to just watch anyway. I love the Ace Attorney games. There are card games that I've really liked, but I've just never been able to actually get into them. I should put on the ring before I forget. Um, like, I really wanted to get into Hearthstone, wanted to uh, get into Hearthstone, but the gameplay, like, it was really fun, and I really liked it, and it was super fun to, like, learn how to play, but then once I knew, it was like, ah, oh, I don't want to play this anymore. I don't know. Actually, playing it is a lot less fun than learning how to play it. <laughs> At least for me. I think you can dodge out by rolling to the side, but I don't know how or what the timing is. I beat this boss soul level 1 new game plus 6 earlier today, so I am mostly good at the 4 kings now. Yeah, lesbian animal, super lesbian animal RPG is pretty good. All things considered. <laughs> Ooh. It wasn't, uh, there was another one, there was a Flash game that I really liked. It was a Flash card game that I played when I was a kid and I had a lot of fun with it, but I have no idea what it was. I have no idea how to find it. I don't remember anything about it other than that it was a card game. And it was the first, like, card game I ever played. Dungeons and Dragons isn't a video game, but it's one of those things that I've always wanted to get into, but I've never, like, wanted to put in the effort to get into, I guess. In high school, I wanted to, but my parents were Christian. <laughs> um, so they didn't want me in getting into it, um, and then I just never did. At this point, I feel like I should get into it just to spite them. But there was a while where I just didn't want to get into it because, uh, trauma, basically. Um, with how my parents didn't want me to get into it. But again, now I just kind of want to get into it <laughs> to spite them, because <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, I would not be able to DM at all. Um. But I know a lot of people who like DMing and who really like D&D. And we've wanted to do a thing, but we just never have yet. It depends what game mode. Because if they were playing, like, Battle Royale, sure. But, like, sometimes you just gotta get into those uh, festival songs. They had to call me, maybe. I think it was today. Um, no, yesterday. I don't know. Recently, um, they added Call Me Maybe, but it's not part of, like, the featured songs, and there's no way I'm gonna buy Call Me Maybe, but it would be really fun. <laughs> I only play Fortnite because of Festival. <laughs> the only rhythm games I play are Fortnite Festival and DJ Max. I got DJ Max because it was on sale, like a huge sale, and one of my friends 
played it a ton um, and really liked it. And then Festival I played because it's free and it's part of a game that my friends also play and it's very similar to DJ Max. So um, I, or I, I was playing, I think it was Mudblocks with Anthony um, at my grandma's house. And the way her house is laid out, you can see the the TV in the living room from like the back of the the back of the hallway, like near her bedroom, which is like at the very back of the house. Um, <laughs> we just heard her yell from across the house. Oh my god, it's Tetris! <laughs> Despite us obviously not playing Tetris, <laughs> it might have been paneled upon. I don't remember. Uh, yes, Scythe is my favorite weapon. Anthony, what were we, what were we playing? Was it Mudblocks? Been in any way. It's just my favorite to use. That sucks. Why did you use that first? Anthony, I'm talking about the story. Uh, oh my god, it's Tetris. Faltian's fine. I don't know. <laughs> I just like the scythe more. Claymore is a close second, I think. And then, I don't know, Faltian's probably in my top ten. It was Warrior's Woods. Yeah. I should be using the jump attacks and stuff more. Uh, I responded to the Pokemon comment by saying that's extremely relatable, and I have the same experience. Um, and I like the shiny hunting, mostly. But I understand why you wouldn't like those aspects. Uh, I don't know. I don't dislike Pokemon stories. Can you stop? I, I'm right here. Please use better attacks for me. Thank you. Um, I don't think Pokemon stories are, like, bad. But... Yeah, I hate spiders especially. Spiders? <laughs> um, I have, like, actually crippling arachnophobia. That sure was a hitbox. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> okay, I'm not even going to try to defend that one. Now, spiders mess me up, uh, but centipedes are just as bad. Mm -hmm. Centipedes aren't quite as bad. I would rather hold, like, a friendly centipede than a friendly spider at, like, a zoo exhibit or whatever. But I still hate both. I hate all bugs. Bugs are disgusting. I wish Oppo looked softer in the live action. That's my biggest critique of the live action. <laughs> Anthony, don't you have pika, though? I feel like you could eat a lot of things most people wouldn't. You have eaten things that most people wouldn't even think of eating. I, I don't think you're a very good <laughs> way to gauge that. I don't know. Driders don't do it for me just because I hate spiders. But I understand centaurs. I know a lot of people really don't like um, the bed of chaos. But I don't really understand why. I like the bed of chaos. <laughs> I'm a glass consumer. <laughs> That's a really fun, funny um, series of words. Uh, pika is just a condition that makes you want to eat non-edible things. It manifests differently for different people, just like all conditions. <laughs> is it usually a texture thing? Is that why um, you, is that like what pika is mostly for you? Or does it also have to do with, like, the act of consumption? Microplastics. I eat a credit card worth of plastic every week. Same with thin paper. See, for me, paper always... Every time I try to, like, chew on paper, because I've heard... Because um, I had friends that did that a lot. Uh, it just ended up turning into gum. And I didn't like that. Ooh. Hit this bit of chaos. What? This boss is so unfair <laughs> and inconsistent. Yeah, it's, uh, paper makes me gag if I put it in my mouth. 
which I feel like is the most po normal possible response. Erasers do not taste like peanut butter. What? <laughs> I thought erasers were a good texture. They looked so fun to bite, but the moment that I actually chewed on an eraser, I hated my life. <laughs> I remember seeing like those those art those erasers in the art room that were like white or um, like tan cubes. I was like, yes, that is what I want to be chewing on. That looks like the best thing that will ever be in contact with my tongue or my teeth. Um, and then it wasn't. It was disgusting and awful, uh, and I hated it. But it looked so nice. Usually taste is more important for me than texture, but there are some textures I can't stand. Like, I feel like if I tried um, uh, durian, I just wouldn't be able to stand it because of the texture, not even the taste. I really like eating. Most food makes me very happy, but some foods make me very normal, or very not, no reaction. But the foods that I like make me very happy. People seem to have a penchant for not sleeping when they're supposed to in this stream. <laughs> that seems to be a running theme. Well, okay, the time that you fall asleep isn't important. Getting enough sleep is. Unless you like have a schedule or whatever. Hello, Brenda. I assume that's how you pronounce that. Please correct me if I am wrong. Oh. Blueberries. Bl blueberries and raisins are both awful um, because of texture as well. Raisins, I don't like the taste, but I can handle it. Um, but the texture for raisins is just the worst thing ever. I really like the taste of Raisin Bran. Raisin Bran is one of those things that I really, really want to like, but I don't because I hate the texture of raisins. It kills me. <laughs> Gas station, like fried foods, pizza sticks, corn dogs. Oh my god. Gas station is like the best place to get those things. <laughs> Let's see if I can kill the crystal golem without dying. Cool. Usually I can't. This one attacks you for some reason, even though the other one just keeps running, and I don't understand why. Whatever. Um, I don't think the DLC should take very long, maybe an hour at most for all of it, at the very, very most. Uh, hopefully closer to half an hour, 45 minutes. I just want people to enjoy the stuff I make. No, I want to make stuff that people enjoy. I think that's, that's an important distinction. So I'm glad I can make that for at least someone. I've spent thousands of hours playing various versions of Tetris. I love Tetris so much. I'm not good at it. <laughs> at least not as good as I should be with how much playtime I have. But I still like, really, really like it. Okay. I should not have gotten hit by that. That was entirely on me. Not sliding, I think, is the biggest thing for me for NES Tetris. It makes it harder, though. Excuse me, Seath. Seath. Excuse me. Thank you. Like, it, it does technically make it more simple. Um, but it just doesn't... I don't know. It makes it harder. Uh, and then on top of not having, like, the holding, it just feels less good. It's a lot more RNG-dependent, obviously. And that's, I think, the biggest thing I don't like about it. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> oh my god, yeah. The NES Tetris community is so nice and good. The modern Tetris community is nice too, but... Okay. We are back. Hopefully. Hopefully OBS is not lying to me. Um, I, I, I can flow better with modern Tetris. I love T- That's what I love about modern Tetris. You have to, like, learn how to stack. Men just, like, aren't attractive to my brain. <laughs> Like, they might be physically attractive, but in any other way, my brain just does not want to romantically be attracted to a guy, and I do not understand why. I mean, it makes sense because I'm gay, but <laughs> I know someone who's unironically very attractive, attracted, very attracted uh, to the Arbiter from Halo. Oh, right, my HP bar. Well, I didn't want to level anything other than Dex. I had no reason to. So I just leveled up health. 
Ups. Meanwhile, the Sanctuary Guardian is like the weakest boss in the game. And by far the easiest boss in the DLC. I mean, yeah, I, I get the Arbiter too. If the Arbiter was a girl, I would be significantly more attracted to him. <laughs> Not that I've looked that up. <laughs> I know a lot, or I don't know a lot of ace people, but the ace people I do know always say the, like, least ace things possible. I'm excited to play ODST, and I genuinely have no idea why. I think it's because it'll be the first Halo game that I've played, that I will play. That doesn't, that you don't play as Master Chief in. But uh, I'm not going to play it until the person I played the other games with can play it with me again. Jesus. I was not expecting to be able to um, attack from neutral. Hope he's running. Oh, there we go. Yeah, uh, isn't there more character customization in Reach? Or is there character customization in Reach, or is it just a few preset characters? Actually, I'm actually not sure. Blech. I should not have gotten hit by that. I've played insanely difficult challenge runs compared to this, and I did so bad in that fight still. I also like soft looking loser people, like smooth skills. Um, I was about to elaborate on something that I probably should not elaborate on. I, w I was going to explain an image that is not appropriate for YouTube, but I'll just throw it in that, in that channel on the Discord. Hey, Mino. It's really cool to see you here, Mino. Just because, like, it's so weird to... It's surreal to see someone who I've watched just completely independently uh, join something that I'm doing. That's a strange feeling. <laughs> if I had to pick a hear me out... Hmm, I have to think, have to think about that. It's Sally from Cars. <laughs> Honestly, I get it. There were so many characters... I had crushes on as a kid just because they were a women <laughs> yeah um jk leeds commented on a couple of my videos and it's just it's so strange because i've been watching him and you both for like a while and then i just make a random challenge running that i did on a whim that has nothing to do with the rest of my channel and then this happens Okay, Dory is not one that I'm wanting to hear you out on. Maybe Magikarp. Maybe. I'm a lot better at Manus than I used to be. I mean, mostly because of the uh, Asylum uh, the asylum items only playthrough. Uh, okay, apparently that was a lie. I mean, I feel like if I had to give one that I definitely am in that way, it would be Rayquaza. Rayquaza? I don't remember. Like, I don't know. Just something about the the snake. Like, the, the shape of the body and just, like, the idea of being coiled around gets me going. Um, maybe Gyarados, if it wasn't so creepy looking. Um, the man serpents from Elden Ring? That's my hear me out, I think. I mean, like, I, it's not that crazy because Raya... But that's just like my main one that I should not be attracted to, that I definitely am. Mostly because of Raya, but also because Serpent and Lizard people and all that. This stream chat went off the rails, and <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> I wouldn't have it any other way. Again, I should be good at Manus by this point. <laughs> right? Just like long bodies. Uh, Primarino is great for various reasons. I will not elaborate. Like, I mean, obviously it has the mermaid imagery, but Manus, no. 
Sorry, I can't do Manus. First of all, he's a man, which <clears throat> does not do it for me. Uh, but also, I don't know, something about the horns. I don't think I like horns, especially when there are that many. If it's just like two horns on top of the head. But Robots are shockingly common. You do have a long body. That is accurate. Uh, robots are shockingly common, especially ones that aren't meant to be attractive. <laughs> Broken heart. That's so real. <laughs> Gwendolyn is the only exception. And I genuinely have no reason for that. It's just because it's Gwendolyn. <laughs> Dusk has awoken. Parents of the Abyss. <laughs> I like that. Parent of the Abyss. I will exclusively be calling him Parent of the Abyss from now on. Sorry, calling them parent of the abyss. Also, oh my god, the the kezu from Monster Hunter. That's my hear me out. I got it. It's the kezu. <laughs> All other things forgotten. The kezu is absolutely my hear me out. <laughs> Not even hear me out. Yeah, when we're born, like I gross. First of all, absolutely disgusting. But I get it. I feel like any game, anyone speedruns, has to be a bad game for them to speedrun it. That's just kind of how it works. That said, I think Dark Souls is perfect, and I will probably never speedrun it, aside from, like, kill Petrus percent. <laughs> I think that would be really fun to do. <laughs> Other than that, I will never speedrun this game. I don't like speedrunning. There are some games that I like to speedrun, but speedrunning itself isn't fun for me. Why am I doing so bad on Calumny? It's just Calumny. I fought him. So many I fought them. It? I fought the Calumny so many times. <laughs> Drake Blood Knight from Sunken King. Um, Sunken King. I know it. I cannot see it in my mind's eye. It's just not showing up. I think I'm being too greedy. Dancer is absolutely not. Hear me out. That is 100% obvious. I totally get that. Half of your, half of the fight, your face is in her ass. Like if you're not attracted to the dancer by the end of that fight, there's something wrong with you. Speedrunning is... I, 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 like, I like doing glitches just for fun. Like, I speedrunning glitches in Dark Souls. I do them all the time. Not because I want to speedrun, but because I like doing the glitches themselves. Ornstein and Smo hate each other, but they are absolutely boyfriends. 100%. I understand why you think that. There we go. Finally. I think I want to... Do prepare to die edition just to mess with like or I want to play through prepare to die edition and just use a ton of glitches that aren't in the remastered version. Like um uh equip her moves new set swap glitch uh and what's the other one? Um the the one where you can like just clip through the floor to get into the demon fire stage fight. Alright, time to first try Gwyn. And then stop streaming, because my throat hurts. See you later, yump Lumpy. I almost called you Yumpy. <laughs> Have a good night. Or day. Whatever it is for you. Testament? I have never heard of Testament. However, I will be doing research <clears throat> after this stream. Hi yeah. Gwen is dead. And now that I'm in a post, uh, that stream is really fun to do. It's been a couple days and my throat has had time to heal, thankfully. <laughs> um, I would like to thank Falcon, Tori Kasuda, SD, 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 SSD, SD, XDD, The Crack, Manorock, 
V, Emily, and Ryan Rickard for continuing to support the channel. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I love you all, and I don't know how to end this.